Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we will take a look at the G-Skill Widget Dash. It's a PC command panel, was already shown quickly during Computex this year. At that time it was not fully ready yet, but now it is ready and also available for purchase. It's basically a PC command panel, so an external touch screen that allows to monitor and also controls functions of your PC. You could think that it's the same like a Stream Deck, but it's not quite the same because the Stream Deck has physical keys, but this one does not. It has a touch screen and quite some interesting functions such as ADA64 integration. What it means we will take a look at today. This is how the device looks like, pretty simple. It is a seven inch capacitive touch screen inside a plastic shell with 1024 times 600 pixel resolution. If you turn it around, there is a big rubber pad so it doesn't slide. Underneath this rubber pad there are pins like headers so you could theoretically access this I think pretty much open source and also like program games on this if you want to. Elmore has a lot of plans for it and that's where I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. This is a um, collaboration between Elmore and G-Skill. I'm obviously as you know good friends with Elmore so I wanted to look what he is doing. First off when I saw it the first time I was not quite sure just seeing the first kind of controls and widgets if this is something I would like but once it matured and now we're getting to that later but with the ADA64 integration it is really awesome. Um, apart from what you already saw is there is a USB Type-C connection on the side right here to connect it to the PC. Once you install the Widgetash software and connect it to your PC you are greeted with this pre-configured first screen because you can also swipe as you can see and access different layers or like different screens. The first one configured like that offers basic functions like going back and forth for songs, you have a clock, you have uh, a weather widget and also hardware info monitoring function. You can see it's monitoring the p-cores of my 3900KS, monitoring the CPU temperature, GPU temperature, GPU power consumption and if you move to the next page this would be for music or media or like Spotify. You can see it has a natural Spotify integration. I'm not locked in my account right now but here you could play some songs with Spotify and in the next screen, if you connect it to Twitch, you can also read the Twitch live chat. This is the main screen of the Widget Dash Messenger, where, where you have this overview, the same one as we saw before. We can also cycle through those uh, different views, where you can configure all those different widgets. When it comes to style, function, everything. You can click on Emulate Device Touch, so if you enable this one, it's basically the same as touching the touch screen on the specific location, so you can see what happens if you touch the specific spot. So for example, for those widgets right here, those are the hardware info ones. On the right side, you have all the presets as the hardware info. So let's just assume this one would be empty. Then you can get the one by one size hardware info one, can drag it in here, and then you can select what it should be displayed right here. So you can just select one of the hardware info functions like bus speed, like basically the B, the B clock or like um, effective CPU clock. There's everything available from hardware info you can select. It just depends on what you want to select with the specific widget. And this is the same for all of them. May it be the clock, audio visualizer, ADA64, we will get to that in a second. And of course also pictures, so where you can just add a static picture if you want to, or also hotkey ones like the one next to it. So there's just the fire logo right here, and then you can bind a hotkey action to it. Right now there is no action, but you can go to add actions. Then you can do nothing as we do right now, you can open a specific page like one of the pages down below like the music library or whatever or you can go to a specific URL like the, the Bauer YouTube channel for example or all kind of different things like a specific hotkey you can open a game if you want to you can set this to have the PUBG logo and if you press on it to start a specific, a specific game all of these kind of functions are possible and you can even configure the fields themselves the way they look like for example if you would want to change the design of this one you just click on it go to design you can see you can change the font the size the foreground color the background color everything can be fully configured to whatever you want. All of those specific fields you can see. And while all of this is already pretty cool and can be quite helpful, my favorite part about this entire screen is the ADA64 integration. And 
I used this design because you can fully customize this design as well. I used this from one of the community members that was in the Elmore Labs Discord that thankfully provided this to me to start with because if you just create this from scratch, it just takes probably a lot of work adding all the, the graphs and everything to make all of your system visible. Now obviously those external displays, small ones you put next to your PC and have the ADA64 integration, that is nothing new, has been around for a long time. Like Lumptron has a ton of those displays. But the thing is, at least from what I know, all of them or probably most of them are using HDMI, which means that it would just be detected as a, like a second or like a third monitor depending on how many monitors you're using. And at least for me, that was always the reason why I never used it. Because depending on what you're doing on your PC, having this as like a real external monitor is causing problems. Like having your mouse flip over there or whatever, or like with games, it can cause problems. That's why I was never really a friend of using them. But the thing is, because this is like connected over USB Type-C, you don't have those issues. It's just a USB device. It doesn't show up in like the NVIDIA graphics driver, for example. That's why, at least for me, just waking this up, it was a lot more useful and you can obviously also uh, adjust the time that it takes to yeah, shut off. You can completely have it on all of the time. For me, I, I think I'm using um, 60 seconds right now because most of the time I just want to check something, like I press on it and see, I don't know, check my graphics card temperature or like utis utilization during rendering of a video. That's where I personally used it because before shooting this video, I used this for myself for six weeks on my personal rig just to see how useful it actually is and what kind of functions I'm using. Because on paper, obviously it offers a lot of functionality, but then you probably have to ask yourself the question, what of this are you actually using? To me, it turned out that I was mainly using the Spotify integration and also using all the like audio controls, mute, go to the next song, uh, increase or lower volume. Those were the basic functions I was using most of the time. And then um, the ADA64 integration, what you can see. I'm a big fan of that. Having this is actually quite useful also in games because sometimes I had the case in like PUBG or Battlefield 2042 where I was using personally FPS Mon to check the, the FPS. Sometimes those games, they disable the, the yeah, support for having those overlays because they fool around with the anti-cheat stuff and then those overlays sometimes don't work anymore and that was the time when I was using the yeah the screen which is as an external device very helpful. The thing with touch screens though is that you leave fingerprints. It's the same thing I hate about my car is if you want to have a touch screen I mean you're touching it and you leave fingerprints. So yeah that is something you have to consider. Also you can see it is not as responsive as like a recent iPad or something so if you pay attention to that at the beginning, it feels sometimes a little bit slow if you do the, like the swiping across the, the pages, for example. But for me, actually in the daily use, it didn't really matter because when I was in Windows, I was just using this overlay. And when I was just gaming, I swiped over and then, yeah, I was using this. I didn't really go back and forth a lot of times. So it didn't really matter to me that much. To add the ADA64 integration, I added a blank page on the end and then you scroll all the way up and there you have the ADA64 which is also available in different kind of sizes depending on what you want to add. It's like fully customizable as well but I wanted to have it full page so I went by five times four and you click on this and then just drag over the field and there you have it. All the configuration of what you can see here is then done in ADA64 itself. To add the support for ADA64 we first have to open it and then go to the preferences. In the preference you go to LCD and here you can see that there is actually a huge amount of displays that is supported for this. And this is mainly so you get the size of the ADA64 support right. So you select G-Skill from the list here and then enable G-Skill LCD support. Also pick the right size. You can see this is 5x4. That is what I earlier selected right here, 5x4, because in theory you could also have ADA64 not on a like fully empty page like I have it but on a default page you can also add like one by one and have one specific ADA64 field right here if you want to. That's up to you to decide but just going by the full page five by four and that's how you enable the basic um, support for this. 
Then to actually configure and modify everything, you go to LCD items. As I pointed out, I imported this from a community member. There is a huge amount of presets for all those ADA64 hardware monitoring functions, also on the ADA64 forums. So you could start with some of those presets. You press import and then you have it here. And on the bottom right here, you have all the items that are present up here. So for example, we have the GPU that is reading RTX 3060 Ti. This is actually not automatically detected for this preset, but you have a text that I just modified and put RTX 3060 Ti in here, which I'm using right now. But obviously there are a lot of monitoring functions like sensor functions that are actually read out. For example, if we take a look at the P cores right here, P core zero is currently read out with 5600 megahertz. This would be the one right here where you can see there's a zero in front and then the 5600 megahertz. If you would want to change that, you just go to modify and there you have the full list of sensor items that are supported from ADA64 and you can see it's basically everything. May it be like fan speed, different voltages, memory, SSD, network, everything is available in here. And then you click on whatever you want to use can change the font size, the style, size, everything. And then you can also put the label in front. For me, the label right now is zero because it's like for, for a core zero, for example. But yeah, that's everything up to you, you want to change. From my experience, because I think it is a lot to do if you want to change it yourself. For example, I added the e-core speed right here because it was not um, available. And then I added e cores and then the e core speed underneath, which is the one you see at the bottom. And for that, I just added the e core sensor. And then with this function right here, you can see you can change the position of the sensor and this way modify everything yourself. It is amazing what you can modify, but it also takes quite a lot of time to get something like this. That means overall you can configure so much that it's at some point maybe also too much for some users it will require you to spend quite some time configuring this display. The software is pretty well made, doesn't consume a lot of resources, which is definitely positive, but you have to keep in mind, at least for me personally, you will need ADA64 to get the most out of it, to have this view. And ADA64 is not for free. So you have to spend another $60. You might already have ADA64. In that case, it's maybe even more interesting to you because the device itself, I think the pricing is pretty fair. It's about $130, which I think is fair for what you get. There are other external, like, I'm not sure how you call it, sensor displays, hardware moni monitoring displays available. But I think this one is a little bit different because it also has a touch screen. So the most other you can buy are mainly for mounting inside your PC and they don't have the touch screen function. So it's not that easy to compare it, especially price wise. But with the seven inch and um, like high brightness and good viewing angle LCD IPS panel, I think it is fair price wise. But as I said, you have to keep in mind that you should get ADA64 to get the most out of that. And then it's about $200, which is definitely not that cheap, but I, but I think it's fair for what you can do with it in theory. You cannot really compare it with a Stream Deck with the physical buttons. And I think it's also addressing a different market. If you're really a Twitch streamer and you need it for like switching scenes, I would personally say it is better to have a Stream Deck with the buttons. I find it more convenient than pressing a touch screen. Um, but for the sake of having some, uh, yeah, like macro functions to open specific products, to open specific programs and um, have like the Spotify integration or like the, the, the Twitch live chat and also having those different overlays with the touch screen and having the ADA64 function, I think it can be an interesting product. Let me know what you think about it and thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.